Good morning. I am Ritika and I am Rakshan. We all welcome you to the class 7 project day. Our project day topic is Indian unsung heroes of World War 1 and 2. The first world war also called the Great War started in 1914 and ended in 1918. The instability created in Europe by the first world war 1914 to 1918 set the stage for another international conflict. World War II, which broke out to two decades late, later, would prove even more devastating. Our friends will be enacting role-playing presentation charts and models. And also a tribute song for our unsung heroes. Hope you all will enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to talk about the World War I. The World War I started in July 1914 and ended in November 1918. The World War I was caused by the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. The war lasted for about four years. This war contained more than 70 million military personnel, 60 million of them Europeans, making one of the largest wars in history. Today, I'm going to be giving a brief explanation on what countries participated during the World War I. As you know, World War I occurred from 1914 to 1918. It entangled almost all of Europe, the Middle East and Russia, and from 1917 also the United States of America. The Central Powers entitled Germany, Austria, Hungary and Turkey were defeated against the Allies, which were France, Great Britain, Russia, Italy, Japan and United States. What India contributed during the war? India did not play an important role in the World War I, but they did contribute a good portion. The Indian Army during World War I contributed a large number of divisions and independent brigades to the European, Mediterranean, Middle East and African theatres of war in the World War I. Why did India participate during the World War I? India played a significant part in the World War I. However, India's part in the war is frequently overlooked as a result of the horrors experienced in trench warfare and by Europe's tendency to home in on battles such as those fought at the Somme and Verdun, which many assume only Europeans fought in. Before the war started, the Germans had spent a great deal of time and energy trying to stir up an anti-British movement in India. Those with influence within India believed that the cause of Indian independence would be best to serve by helping out Britain in whatever capacity India could get independence. Weapons played a big part in creating the difficult and unusual circumstance of the warfare which the British Army encountered during First World War. The destructive power of modern artillery and machine guns were used. Rifles were by far the most commonly used weapon are the four important British officers who led the Indian Army. In our next slide, the seventh is the 15th Sikhs in Marseille on their way to fight the Germans. The eighth is the second Rajput Light Infantry in action in Flanders. The ninth is the Hodson's Horse charging near Bregenz. Next is the 39th Gavar Rifles March in France. And the last one is the Meerut Cavalry Brigade marching near Fingers, France. Over 1 million Indian troops served overseas, of whom 62,000 died and another 67,000 were wounded. In total, at least 74,000 Indian soldiers died during the World War I. Gudadat Khan became the first Indian soldier to be awarded the Victoria Cross. Indian divisions were also sent to Egypt, Gallipoli, Germany, East Africa. Nearly 700,000 were sent to Mesopotamia against the Ottoman Empire. Today, I'm here to talk about Qudadat Khan and Shah Ahmed Khan. Uh, first, let's talk about Qudadat Khan. Uh, Qudadat Khan was uh, born on 20th October of 1888 and he died on 8th March of 1971. His rank was a surveyor and he also received the Victoria Cross. Um, Qudadat Khan, um, on 31st October 1914 at Holloway, Belgium, 26-year-old Khan, then serving in the uh, British Indian Army, performed an act, uh, act of bravery for which he was awarded the Victoria Cross during the First World War. A statue of Qudala Khan in the entrance, entrance of the Pakistan Army Museum in Rawalpindi. Next, let's talk about Shah Ahmed Khan. Shah Ahmed Khan uh, was born on the 1st of July, 1879 and he died on 28 July of 1947. 
Shamir Khan was an uh, he was also an, uh, a recipient of the Victoria Cross. Uh, he was a Punjabi a Muslim Rajput from the district of Rawal Pindi in modern Pakistan. He was 36 years old and a Nayak in the 89th Punjabi Br- British Army, now first battalion uh, the ba- Balach Regiment Pakistan Army during the First World War. He served on the uh, Tigris Front in Mesopotamia. Uh, thank you. Kulbi Thappa, VC. Born 15 December 1889, Palwa, Nepal, died 3rd October 1956, Nepal, Rank Havildar, Battles, World War One. Service, British Indian Army. Gobind Singh, V.C., born 7 December 1887, Nagar, died 9 December 1942, Rank Jamadar, Service, British Indian Army, Battles, World War One. Awards, Victoria Cross. The Victoria Cross is the highest and most prestigious award of the British honor system. It was introduced on 29 January 1856. Now I'm going to be talking about the memorial of the Indian soldiers who died in the World War I and World War II. The India Gate. The India Gate was an important monument in the city and was built in the commemoration of more than 80,000 soldiers were killed in the World War One. The India Gate was earlier named the All India War Memorial. It is often compared to the Arc of Constantine in Rome, the Arc de Triomphe in Paris, and the Gateway of India in Mumbai. And also, 13,300 servicemen's names, including some soldiers and officers from the United Kingdom, was inscribed on the gate. Our PowerPoint presentation's topic is India's participation in World War II. Going to be presented by Introduction to World War II. It began on 1939 and ended on 1945. It happened between Axis powers, Germany, Italy, Japan and the Allies, Great Britain, France, USSR, the United States, and to a lesser extent, China. World War II began on September 1st, 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. The France, Great Britain, and the USSR joined with them. End of World War II It ended with the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Hitler committed suicide on 1945. The Allied armies converged on Berlin. This declared the end of World War II. Good morning. I am student of class and me here to explain about LT Jamshid Manisha. LT Jamshid was from Bulsar in Gujarat and worked in Kabul and Afghanistan before he joined the Indian Army as a commissioned officer. He was sent to fight against Japanese Imperial forces in the Northeast India. Maneksha belonged to the Parsis community, who are Zoroastrians who escaped from Iran facing persecution and had settled down in India and excelled in business. Mr. Madura had been performing the last rites of LD Jamshi. Thank you. To one and all present here, I'm TSG of class 7A. I'm going to explain about Ram Sarup Singh. Ram Sarup Singh led his platoon through the Kennedy Peak in Tidum, Burma in October 1944 against the Japanese. Ram Sarup Singh was shot in on its thighs but continued to fire against the Japanese bunkers, taking out several enemy soldiers. Awards he got was Victoria Cross Medal. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Shivani and I am from class 7A. Today I will be talking about technology and device used in World War II. Technology played a significant role in World War II. Many types of technology were customized for military use and major developments occurred across several fields including weaponry, logistical support, communication and intelligence, medicine and rocketry. Communication and intelligence, medicine and rocketry. Radar technology played a significant part in World War II and was of such importance that some historians have claimed that radar helped the Allies win the war more than any other piece of technology including the atomic bomb. Few weapons used in World War II are M1 carbine, 
M1 Garand, Springfield M1903, S1 M1924 and Monster M1908 are the weapons used in World War II. Thank you. Tactics in Warfare Tactics in Warfare, the art and science of the fighting battle on land, on sea, on earth. Uh, and air, um, it is uh, concerned with the appro approach to combat. Uh, the disposition of crops and other personalities, the use made of various arms, ship or aircraft, um, and the excuse of uh, movements for attract and distance. This. Good morning to one and all present here. I am Saleh of Class 7B. Today, I am going to be talking about India's transportation during the World War II. Let's start up with the Royal Indian Navy. In 1934, the Royal Indian Marine became the Royal Indian Navy, R-I-N. The Royal Indian Navy was small and only had eight warships. The war led to an expansion. Additionally, Indian sailors had to serve on board in the Royal Indian Navy ship. The sailors also started a rebellion known as the Royal Indian Navy Mutiny. Thank you. The British Indian Army during the World War II began the war in 1939, numbering just under 2,000 men. By the end of the war, it has become the largest volunteer, volunteer army in history, raising to over 2.5 million men in August 1945. The British Indian Army fought in Ethiopia against the Italian Army in Egypt, Libya, Tunisia, and Algeria. However, the bulk of, bulk of British Indian Army was committed to fight the Japanese Army. World War II, the IAF played an instrumental role in blocking of the advanced Japanese army in Burma. During the war, the IAF went through a pass of a steady. So people began to invent things due to their growing needs. Transportations like submarines, rockets and helicopters were invented during this period. We all have been using computers a lot nowadays. Have you ever wondered when these were invented? Computers were invented during the World War II by Cypher, Bletchley and Colossus. Automated teller machines, also known as ATMs, were invented during this period by Luther James. Even though he started working on this project in the 1939, the first ever ATM was used only in the 1960s. Ballpoint pens. Artist Laszlo Biro invented the ballpoint pens in the year 1940. Good morning, everybody. Now we are going to present the impacts of World War One and Two on India. With me, Tvarita, Ruby, Annapurna, and Vedalata are there. First of all, I would like to thank them all for being here. Let's get started. World War One ended the myth of indestructible power of the British Empire. British faced many humiliating defeats during the war. This raised the self-confidence among Indians. The soldiers returned after the war raised the morale of masses. Vedalata, can you share your opinion on general impacts? Yes, sure, Aishwarya. General impact. Rahul attack immediately after the war led to the rise of national consciousness. Non-cooperation movement was launched. Formation of USSR after the war also led to the rise of Communism in India. Ruby, could you please tell us the thought about political impact? Sure, Vedalata. The returns of Punjabi soldiers after the war aroused political activity against the colonial rule. Punjabi supplied a large number of troops and turns into an epic center of nationalism after the war. There was a surge of nationalism and rise of mass civil disobedience immediately after the war. As the war dragged on, resentment grew the fuel of nationalism. Aisha, could you please tell us about the social impact? Yes, Ruby. Literacy rates increased between 1911 and 1921 as soldiers learned to read and write on their foreign campaigns. Social respect grew for particular communities who participated in the war. Huge number of nurses and doctors were recruited from India, which left Indian society deprived of essential services. Tarita, could you please give us some information about economical impact? 
Sure, Aishwarya, and I will also share some impact on World War II. Demand for Indian goods increased. Industrial prices doubled in six years after 1914. Export of jute suffered due to the loss of European market, but military demand compensated. Cotton benefited from the decline in British goods. The steel sectors benefited as well. Impact of World War II on India had a major impact on the process of decolonization. Gave rise to several nationalist movements. Britain lost a lot of capitals and asked help from the colonies to get the status of world power back. Annapurna, can you please share your thoughts? Yes, Swarita. Mahatma Gandhi organized Indians against the British. After the World War, people all over the world started started voices against the British occupation over its colonies. British Indian Army numbered around two lakh twenty thousand troops before World War Two. By the end of World War Two, Royal Indian Army became the largest volunteer army in the history. Indians also helped in liberating British colonies such as Singapore and Hong Kong after the war. Japanese occupation of Andaman. Japanese army occupied Port Blair. It consisted of three hundred six military. They were later enrolled in Indian National Army formed by Subhas Chandra Bose. Bengal famine of nineteen forty three. It was a man-made famine, one of the worst famines of India. It killed four million Indians. Bengal's main source of food fell to the hands of Japanese. Food stocks started running low. Swarita, could you please share your view? Sure, Anupurna. Muslim League sided with British. Muslim League supported the war on Germany by doing so. Jinnah advanced Muslim interests. He spoke of a separated Muslim state, which is known as Lahore Declaration, Battle of Impala and Kohima. In 1944, Battle of Kohima was broke out. Japanese army with Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose attacked British garrison, incurred heavy losses on both the sides. Annapurna, can you please share your thoughts? Swarita, Labour Party came to power in 1945 in Britain. It spread internationalism and racial equality. P. M. Selimant actually began the process of granting India its independence. Half a million people perished. Twelve million became homeless. There was a violent migration across the Indian border, resulted in many displaced killed. Indian independence movement was a series of historic events with a true national spirit of courage. Let us remember the golden heritage of our country and feel proud to be a part of India. Thank you. Good morning, students. Today we are going to learn about the great Indian unsung heroes. What is up? I have never heard them. Are they like soldiers? Yes, they were soldiers in the British Indian Army during. The During the World War One and Two, let's watch some videos about them and get to know them. At first, we will look at Arshla Khan. My name is Arshla Khan. I served in the TJ Fifty Seventh Royal Rifles. We were the first to go to war. I led the troops after the first company and British soldiers on the Western Front in Belgium and Italy. Thank you. Next, we will learn about Amar Singh. Hi, my name is Amar Singh. I was considered to be the World War One. Let us to Western writers. I wrote the longest diary in the world. My diary covers my experience from India to the Western Britain and the Ira Front. Bye. Next, who are we going to see, sir? Do you know who is Kasturi Bai Gandhi? Let's watch. I worked in Indian Army Hospital in the southern coast of England. I served close to one thousand six hundred Indian soldiers who were wounded in the war. Thank you. Now let's look at Abul Noor, another great Indian unsung hero of the British Indian Army. To your scholars of guys, I was wounded three times because of my dedication in the secret service to His Majesty. I was one of the sixteen soldiers who were chosen for a secret mission in Soviet Central Asia. Our goal was to stop the Russians. from reaching german by railways and caspian sea next we are going to see about meer das 
My name is Mirdas and my brother's name is Mirmaster. He is a deserter and a German spy agent. I won the Victoria Cross in April 1915 for my actions in Weiss Weipress under chemical attack. On May, the Germans had released a poisonous gas into a trench. I inhaled the gas door 9 seconds. Yet I fought and bought the so the wounded soldiers out of the trench. After mere dust, let's take a look at Pratap Singh. Hi, my name is Pratap Singh. I was an aerostatic officer from uh, from Jodhpur Lancers. I was 71 years old when I went to war. I was the oldest soldier of my regiment. I have two t- uh, teenage sons, Anuth and Sagat, who joined me in our trenches uh, and moved with me to the Middle, Middle East. I was 74 years when the Japanese troops saddled me for 20, 24 hours. Uh, 13,000 Indian soldiers died in that war, including me. Bye. Yashmat Gajay, another hero of the British Indian Army during the World War II. Let's learn about him. I am Jishman Das. I served in the 5th Martha Infantry in World War II. On 10th July 1944, in Delhi, a open fire thrown by me. When I went near the trenches, they started firing. They have no choice but to throw granites. We throw three granites and they wounded all soldiers in the bunker. We were shot after we killed every person. When I saw suddenly, my men started dying. Before I reala- realized how I was shooted by a any means sniper who killed the other. Last, we are going to see Ram Swarup Singh. Hi, I am Ram Swarup Singh. I am from the 1st Punjab Regiment. I was on a mission to defeat, destroy the Japanese bunkers and trenches. The bunkers had two mission guns and a light gun. They have wounded me four times. Some of the great Indian unsung heroes in the British Indian Army who fought the World War I and II. Did all of you enjoy? Oh no, your teacher is sick. But don't worry, I will come out the lessons in beha- on behalf of him. See about Lieutenant Jamshid Manik Shah. Hi, my name is Lieutenant Jamshid Manik Shah. I belong to Basler in Gujarat. I work in Afghanistan before I joined Indian Army, I was sent to fight against the Japanese force in the northeast part of India and in Chet. And next we are going to see about Karamjit Singh Judge. I am Karamjit Singh Judge. My father was the chief of police at Lakhotala. I was part of Indian National Congress. My brother Ajit Singh Judge was the wrong in Indian Army. I wanted to join the army, so I discontinued my political studies. I enrolled myself in officer training school in Bangalore and got accepted in the 15th Punjab Regiment and then was taken into the British 14th Army during the most important part of the war. We made the time. So, why can't we do it as a roadplay? Because we are doing. Thank you. Jai Hind. Hello everyone, I am Ritika from class 7A and today I am going to speak about World War 1. World War 1 literally hit the world like never before. It is one of the greatest watersheds from the 20th century geopolitical history. While the war continued through the period from 1914 to 1918, it continued to define the status of world politics until the Second World War.
approximately 1.3 Indian soldiers served in World War I, and over 70 of 24,000 of them lost their lives. But history has mostly forgotten these sacrifices, which are rewarded with broken promises of Indian independence from the British government. And I'm hello everyone. My name is Anisha, and I'm going to say about World War Two. At that time, India gifted as I as hundred million British pound to Britain to fund their war in hope of dominion status and home rules in Britain. India also supplied as much as 37 lakh tons of supplies to the British. A Hello, my name is Varsha Sri and I am from class 7A. I am going to be talking about the role of the Indian Army in British ranks. Men of Indian Army were heroes. Some recognized, but mostly unsung or unknown. Some of the heroes were Khudat Khan, Mir Dast, Haha Mad Khan, Lala, Darwan Negi, Gabbar Negi, Karan Bahadur Rana, Badu Singh, Chata Singh, Gobind Singh, and Kulbir Tapa. The Indian Army played a vital role in the victory of Allies. While India was under British colonial rule, it provided in large numbers and distinctly to the European, Mediterranean, and the Middle East halls of war, obviously from the British side. During this time, India was struggling for self dominion status under British, if not for complete freedom. Hello, everybody. My name is Rachna. I'm from class 7A. Today, I'm honored to speak about a few Indian soldiers who took part in the World War I. Our first hero is Shahamat Khan. Shahamat Khan was from the district of Rawalpindi in modern day Pakistan. He was about 36 years old when he joined the British Indian Army and was appointed as a Naik. He served at the Tigris Front in Mesopotamia. During the First World War, Shahamat Khan worked against single handedly and repelled three counter attacks from the enemy. And while on the extreme heavy fire, he held the enemy at bay while the area was being made secure for a long period of three hours. Such was his bravery. Our next hero is Badlo Singh. Badlo Singh was born in a little village called Dakla in the district of Rotak. He joined the British Indian Army when he was about 33 years old. He was made a resultar in the 14th Murray's Jet Lancers and the British Indian Army. He was attached to the 29th Lancers during the First World War. He gave up his life bravely in the battlefield. And on, to honor his bravery, on 23rd September 1918, he was awarded the prestigious Victoria Cross at Kiss Samarihev near the Jordan River at modern Palestine. Thank you. Have a nice day. Hello everyone, I'm Ritika from Class 7A talking about the soldier who took part in the World War. Aparnda Ayappa MBA was also known as Ayappa September 1935 saw the commissioning of the first Indian officer from the Indian Military Academy. Now I am Born on 15 December 1888 in Pulpa, Nepal to Hariya Gulte. Tapa was 26 year old rifleman in the 2nd Battalion, 3rd Queen Alexandra's own Gurkha rifles. British Indian Army. Darwan Singh Negi. Darwan Singh Negi was born on November 1881. Was the second Indian soldier ever to receive the Victoria Cross. I am Al Chakanan of Class 7. Today, I am going to be talking about the model that I made for the project. I hope that you can see this. This 
is a knife used in World War I. This is also known as kukri or it's known as kukri. So it's a type of matchup originating from the Indian subcontinent and is traditionally associated with the Nepali speaking Gurgas of Nepal and India. Thank you. Hello everyone. So this is Anshka from Class Journey. So today I want to talk about a weapon which is used in World War One and to burn on some schools. Grenade launcher. A grenade launcher is a weapon that fires a special and large caliber projectile, often with an explosive smoke or gas fire. Today I'm going to talk about a very interesting fact. A chemical weapon which was used in World War One in Fort Indian. Not for a World War One soldier, it was in trench weapon which takes fire. This war was in show. Everyone, my name is Nana. I'm going to talk about killing names and guns. Humans provide themselves remarkably ingenious and adaptable when it comes to finding new ways to maim and kill during the First World War. This list below explores the many of the weapons used to produce millions of casualties in four in four shot in four shot war. About the gun rifles, all the all the nations used more than one type of a firearm during the First World War. The rifles most most commonly used by the major companies were among the Allies, the Lee and Pen 303 used by the Big Ten and Commonwealth, the Able Bearer 8mm France. About the grenade. In the World War I, hand grenades were also known as hand bombs. The, the in general philosophy of their use in, in the fighting armies was that the grenades could kill the enemy underground or behind cover. They could also force the enemy into the uh, open, providing targets for rifle and the machine gun fire. Thank you and have a good day. Good morning, everyone. My name is Tanish Tanakaran and I'm from Class 7B. I'm going to talk about the cannon. A cannon is a caliber, caliber gun classified as a type of artillery and usually launches a projectile using explosive chemical propellant. In the past, black gunpowder was a primary propellant before the invention of smokeless powder during the late 19th centuries. Cannon vary in gauge, effective range, mobility, rate of fire, angle of fire and fire power. Different forms of cannon combine and balance these attributes and carry varying degrees depending on their intended use on the battlefield. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Anirat Balaji of Class 7A. Today, my group, which is the facts group, is going to present a very good facts that you never knew about the World War. So, let me start explaining. The first point was, India was the largest contributor of soldiers to the British Empire. India contributed about 800,000 soldiers who fought for the British Empire. Total contribution from India was more than combined contribution of South Africa, Canada, New Zealand and Australia. At the end of the war, 62,000 Indian soldiers were killed in action and another 67,000 were wounded. However, the overall casualties were greater because many Indian soldiers died of illness and because of extreme cold conditions in some of the western fronts. The total casualties on Indian side because of combined reasons stood to 74,187. Thank you. Not just armed soldiers, India also offered over 43,000 for Indian labor corps. These non-combatants were tasked with work like handling, supplies, quarrying, carpentry, road development, etc. To narrow it down, they were tasked with every other work other than... Act 3, not just men, even women were deployed in imperial service during World War One. Queen Alexandria's Imperial Military Nursing Service actually originated in the Indian Army at the beginning of the war in 1914. A total of 300 Indian nurses served Queen, Queen Alexandria's Imperial Military Nursing Service and by the, the time the war ended, 
The numbers went up to 10,404, including nurses from India and other countries. A total of 200 nurses died while being on active service. Many of these nurses who lost their lives were Indians. Fifth point. The, the Free India Center was set up in Berlin and Bose began to recruit Indians for his cause amongst prisoners of war his detention camps. By 1943, Bose had established a provincial government in of India in Singapore, built up a 40,000 strong army and declared war on the Allies. Bose forces fought in, with the Japanese at the Impal and Kohima, meaning that there were Indian soldiers on both sides. The strength of the forces from the British Raj on the 70% colonial allied side in this battle. However, encouraged nationalist movements in India and, and its neighboring countries resulting with the eventual grant of independence in 1947. Now, not just men and materials. India also supplied enormous amount of wealth to the British Empire. But about 100 million pounds of wealth was contributed from Indian subcontinent. In today's context, the total value of Indian contribution towards World War I was rupees. 7,420,800,000 rupees. Back in those days, the total contribution was worth 80 million British pounds. Hello everybody, I'm Nithinia of Class 70 and today I'm going to talk about Gavir Singh. Gaur Singh Nek came from a family of farmers. At the age of 20, he joined the British expedition to fight the Germans during the war of New Chapel, France. He succumbed to his injuries during the war. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Mirdas. I was from Northwest Frontier Province. I fought the Battle of Vipers. I sacrificed my life and used chlorine gas against the Germans. Then I was admitted to a field hospital and then we received the Victoria Cross. Thank you. Good morning to one and all present here. This is Madhur Ashmit of Class 7B taking up the role of Shahamad Khan. I, Shahamad Khan, was the 89th Punjabi Muslim. I fought the Germans along the Tigris. I, in the Third World War, was hospitalized and was later taken to the position of the Subedar. I finally died before the separation of Punjab. Thank you. Good morning to one and all present here. I am Mahita of Class 7B and today we will be reading about Chatta Singh. Chatta Singh was born in Tirasa, Kanpur in Uttar Pradesh. Chatta Singh Ji was a recipient of the Victoria Cross. He was a subedar in the 9th Bhopal Infantry Unit while he was fighting in the World War I. Though an Indian, he was the person who got the pride of having the award from the British. He died on 28 March 1961. Thank you. Good morning everyone, my name is Dhruv from class 7B and today I am going to speak about the great warrior Kabir Thapa. Kabir Thapa was the first Indian Palace Gurkha recipient of the Victoria Cross. Kabir, born in 15 December 1889, Palpa, Nepal, was a valiant person. He served in the World War I as a Havildar in the British Indian Army. On 3rd October 1956, the great Kabir Thapa was no more. Thank you. Good morning to one of our present here. This is Netra of class 7B and I am going to talk about Badlo Singh. Badlo Singh was born on 13th January 1876 in the Dakla district, Haryana, India. He created a great impact in the World War I in the rank of a resolder and he won the Victoria Cross Award. Finally, the brave Badlo Singh was dead on 23rd September 1980. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ayush of class 7B. 
I am going to talk about Darwin Singh Negi from the World War II. Darwin Singh Negi was the second Indian soldier to ever get the Victoria Cross Award, which was a very prestigious award. Darwin was born in November 1881 when India served in the British Indian Army branch. With the rank of Subedar, he was at the top of the 39th Garwal Rifles Unit. The great person who outdid the World War, Darwin Singh died on 24 June 1950. Thank you. You Indians are going to die. Let me see how well you found. You cannot defeat me. Good morning everybody. I am Samrudhi from class 7B. Good morning everybody. I am Anjana of class 7A. Good morning everybody. I am Chinmay from class 7B. Good morning everybody. I am Roshni from class 7B. Boys, 
सिख कोई जात मराठा कोई सिख कोई जात मराठा कोई गुर का कोई मदरासी कोई गुर का कोई मदरासी सर हाथ पर मारने वाला सर हाथ पर मारने वाला हर वीत भारत वासी हर वीत भारत वासी जो खून गिरा पर वत पर जो खून शहीद हुस्तानी जो शहीद हुए हैं उनकी जरा याद करो कुर्बानी जरा याद करो कुर्बानी हिंद जय हिंद की सेना जय हिंद जय हिंद की सेना जय हिंद जय हिंद जय हिंद थैंक यू thank you thank you